Welcome back. What's going on guys? So today I wanted to change gears a little bit and talk about my absolute favorite species to catch, smallmouth bass. Now, more specifically, I wanted to talk about my five favorite baits for catching smallmouth in summer. And I'm not gonna necessarily get super brand centric. More so, I wanna talk about sort of like a few of my favorite categories of baits that I like to throw. And I don't know that brand always makes a big difference. So that's sort of how I'm gonna approach this. And I'm also, I'm also gonna break it down into two different categories. First off, we're gonna talk about search baits that I like to use. And secondly, we're gonna talk about different finesse baits I like. When you're slowing down and trying to catch fish that you know are there, but don't necessarily wanna bite fast moving baits. And I also wanna preface this by saying, just because I'm throwing a search bait, doesn't mean I'm aimlessly casting and winding. Whenever I go to different spots to catch smallmouth bass, especially in summertime, I will always idle over these areas to make sure it's got ample cover, which is typically rock. And I will see if there's bait fish there. That's also very important. And also important, I'm gonna see if I mark any fish. So I'm gonna do that before I fish anywhere, even when I'm using search baits. You give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. You teach him to, f to fish. You give him, you give him, and uh, no, 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 no. All right, now without further ado, let's get into the first category of baits. And that is swim baits. All right, I'm just joking. Not that kind of swim bait. This is like a big, large mouth bass swim bait or whatever. I rarely use something like that. These kind of swim baits. Now, more specifically, this is kind of like a key tech style of swim bait. They're the ones who kind of populate, popularized this sort of style. It's got the ribs, ribbed sides, which displaces a little bit of water. Um, swim baits like this usually have a nice kicking action in the back. And what I like to do with swim baits like this in summertime, I use I use these all year. This is probably my number one go-to search bait for smallmouth bass any time of the year. But during the summertime, I like to put a big swim bait head on it. So sort of like probably like a half ounce head or so. And what that'll do is that'll get the bait down very quickly and allows you to fish quickly in deep water. I'll cast it out and let it hit the bottom and then I'll reel it back somewhat quickly as long as this thing is is making contact with the bottom every now and then. It doesn't, you're not, you're not dragging it on the bottom, but you're also not swimming it in the middle of the water column unless that's where the fish are. So that's what I'll do. You could fish in 20 foot of water if you wanted to, or you could fish it shallower. When I really want to slow down, I'll downsize to like maybe a quarter ounce head. This is usually the first bait that I will use when I go out looking for smallmouth bass because I like it, it gets bit. It's just one of my go-tos. Sticking with swim baits, when the bite is a little bit tougher, I'll go to something like this. It's a little bit of a smaller profile and you can put a tiny head on this and fish it really, really slowly and it's a really great finesse tactic. It still covers water because it's obviously a horizontal bait. So this is another go-to along with the larger style bait. So bigger, smaller, they both have their time and place. Now on to the next category, which is gonna be another search bait, and that is top water. Now I think if you ask anybody what their favorite way to catch smallmouth bass would be, you know, I think 90% of people would say top water. And for good reason. I mean, how fun is it to watch a crazy smallmouth bass come and crash on the surface and hit your bait? It's hard to beat in that category. But the awesome part about topwater baits is it's not all for the fun. Sometimes this is the best way to catch smallmouth bass in summer. Specifically, I like to use these during the low light periods when smallmouth come up on rocks. You know, whether that's in the morning, early in the morning, or in the evening as the sun, are going, the sun is going down, that's a great way to do it. And my favorite topwater lure is a popper. Now this is an X-pop right here. Um, the cover pop, the new cover pop is maybe one of the best pop popping style topwater lures on the market. I know it's really popular on the Elite Series and FLW Tour right now, but without getting too deep into brand specific stuff, 
A popper style bait is my favorite because of its versatility. Now you can fish this fast, you go pop, 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 pop. And additionally, you can fish this very slow when the fish are maybe not as active. To me, I just love that versatility, fast or slow. It's got this feather here, feathered treble, which I think is critical. And the nice thing is what you, think, what you can do is a lot of times this is how you'll get bit. You'll give it a pop, pop. And then you'll let it sit for a second and that back will dip down and that treble is just enough to tempt them. So the pop, pop will get their attention. And let's say if the bite is slow, you know, the treble will be enough for that smallmouth bite to be tempted into biting. So that's a big one. Um, a lot of people like to use uh, jump style baits. But personally, I don't like those as much because I feel like the hooking percentage is not as good. Whereas the hooking percentage on these guys is actually pretty darn good. I find that it, it draws fish in from a little bit farther and maybe gets a few more strikes, but you're not gonna hook as many of those fish. So that's why I stay away from walk the dog style baits. Now I think a super common question that's always out there is what kind of line do you like to use for topwater baits? I personally like to use mono because I believe that the stretch helps me actually get a, a good hook set. I'm the kind of guy who gets really excited and likes to rip your rod as soon as you see anything. And so that stretch gives gives the fish a second to actually get a good a good bite on it before I get too excited. And additionally, I help it, I think it helps keep these little, little treble hooks pinned when you're fighting the fish and not ripping it out of their mouth like if you're using braid. Remember, it's braid and mono as the two options when you're topwater fishing because those are the two floating lines, which is pretty important when you're fishing in topwater because you'll mess up the action if you're using a sinking line like fluorocarbon. And now for lure number three. Lure number three is my actual, actually this is my favorite smallmouth bass lure, and that is the black hair jig. Now this thing is an absolute killer, and to me, it actually doesn't necessarily fall into the search bait category or the finesse category because it's a little bit of both. So how you fish this thing is simply, you cast it out as far as you can and you let it sink down to the desired depth and then you slowly swim it across the water column. And it, it, it's simple and a lot of people don't have confidence in it, but to me it is the absolute best smallmouth bass bait on the planet right now. So the reason why I would consider this sort of a hybrid between like a search bait and a finesse bait is because number one, when you cast this thing out, you fish it horizontally, you're actually covering water fairly quickly with the horizontal presentation. If you're fan casting an area, you can really cover areas fairly well in a fairly short period of time. But the finesse side, number two, is this thing just gets bit. This is absolutely one of my go-to baits when the fish are in a negative to neutral mood. And the thing about this lure is that it is absolutely one of the most underutilized smallmouth bass lures out there. And you know, it's really popular in the Great Lakes in some areas, but this catches smallmouth bass everywhere. And I think probably the reason why a lot of folks don't use it is because they don't, they don't have the confidence in it yet, or they just feel like it's dumb, or it's hard to cast, or whatever. And that's a big mistake, because this thing catches them. Um, a few quick tips as far as head styles go. I will use a 16th ounce head when the fish are in a super negative mood and I need to swim it really slowly. Um, that can be difficult during the summertime when you're fishing in deep water. Otherwise, I'll normally fish an eighth ounce head, typically. Um, you can move it fairly quickly and it casts fairly well. And that just seems to be a good happy medium. But if it's really windy or if you wanna fish it really quickly, I'll actually upsize to a quarter ounce head. And that works great. It still gets bites from finicky fish. So just a great overall presentation that I'd recommend. Oh, and very important is castability. So how do you maximize the castability of this tiny little little fly hair, hair deal? And how I do that is I make sure I'm throwing it on braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. So the fluorocarbon leader is obviously important for vision. It's also nice because it sinks a little bit. So that actually helps get this bait down. When it's a light bait like this, you wanna move it you know, as fast as you can 
uh, the fluorocarbon gets it down so you're not skipping it across the surface. Um, but the braid is important for castability and not only that, I like to use really, really long rods. Specifically, I've been using an eight foot six extra fast action rod and that allows you to get as big of a catapult to launch this thing as far away from the boat as possible. And castability is the biggest issue with this bait, but if you're geared upright, it shouldn't be an issue. And you know, cast with the wind, that helps a little bit too. Also, quick pro tip, pro tip, <laughs> um, before I switch to the next bait is, I like to use these VMC Marabou jigs, it's pretty popular. Um, but what I will do, I don't know if you can see it, is I will cut off, here there's actually one still here. There's like little uh, flashaboo sparkling strands. I like to just pull those off, cut them off, and make it as black and plain as possible. That's, that's just what I prefer. Number four. All right guys, number four on the list is a mainstay all year long, absolutely one of the most versatile smallmouth bass baits on the planet, and that is the drop shot. So, a few things I like to rig up on the drop shot. Number one, I'd say it's pretty underutilized and that's a leech. Plastic leech, not a, a real leech. Um, leeches work great. Sankos are a big deal. Like a three to four inch Sanko is absolutely dynamite. I don't know if any of you guys followed uh, the Elite Series event on Mille Lacs a couple years ago. Seth Fighter caught, I'm pretty sure he caught all of his fish on a wacky rigged Sanko drop shot rig on a deeper water. That was sort of late summer. Um, another good option, oh yeah, robo worms are always a mainstay. I mean, not to get too brand specific or anything, but these things were designed for drop shot fishing out, out on the west coast where drop shotting sort of originated after it came over from Japan or whatever. Um, and these things are great. Additionally, if I'm fishing in like the Great Lakes where there's a lot of gobies, I will use plastics like this. This is the X-Zone Slammer, I believe. Um, Erie darters are great too, and just the whole idea is you're imitating gobies. So it's always important to know where you're fishing and what the main forage is for smallmouth bass. Like if you're on Lake St. Clair, Lake Erie, you know, they're just, they're just pounding gobies all day. They're sucking them up like vacuums. So pays to match the hatch in a lot of situations. And additionally, like craws are great when you're fishing around boulders and you know the fish are eating a lot of craws. You know, a lot of guys don't drop shot craws, but that's another good option too. Um, and then as far as rod reel line, I like to use a little bit of a shorter rod when I'm drop shotting. So usually about 6'10 or 6'8. Um, and then I personally like to use braided line. And the reason why I like that is because you know, if you're fishing really deep, braid is obviously good for hook set and whatnot, but also when you're casting, it's nice because you can cast it out and then I like to slowly drag it back and just, you know, shake it a little bit, drag it. And the reason why I like that is the braid allows me to feel the bottom composition as I'm dragging the weight across the bottom. And to me, that's a big deal. I can feel where the rock is, etc. And of course, you need to be using a fluorocarbon leader when you're doing this as well. So that's sort of my go-to drop shot setup. Five time. <laughs> now the last lure on the list is a lure that never ever goes out of style. And that is the green pumpkin tube. An absolute killer no matter where you go. And actually any color will work fine as long as it's green pumpkin. <laughs> and what's great about the tube is really it's a super elementary bait to fish. Elementary, my dear Watson. Now, this is the lure that I grew up fishing because my dad said, here's a rod with a tube on it. You can't mess this up, just drag it on the bottom. And that's what I do right now with my kid. My son, Carter, is a tube master. And the problem is sometimes, I don't know, actually this isn't a problem, but the problem is sometimes he will outfish me like crazy because I will be hucking one of these, trying to get aggressive bites, finding fish, and he'll just be dragging this thing in back of the boat. And this thing will get bit a little bit better than this thing on most days. No matter where you go when you're fishing smallmouth bass, do not forget about the tubes. It's a big deal. Um, and so 
There are two different ways to rig tubes. And I think it's important to try both when you're out on the water. So this one is internally rigged and that's a very popular strategy with like a, a jig head sort of like this where you just kind of shove it inside of the tube. And additionally, you can hook it on the outside like this with one of these. Um, so it's kind of like, like that. So that's, that's another good option. Um, and the reason why you would try both is, I like this because it's just super compact. You're never gonna tear the thing off the hook. It's way more efficient. But sometimes it pays to have it hooked on the outside because it, it falls a little bit different and the different falling action can actually make a big difference on some days. So one thing that we noticed, me and my dad have fished a lot of tournaments out in the Great Lakes where it's basically a green tube uh, smash vest. And one thing that you'll notice over the course of the week is sometimes the fish will key in on different kind of speckled colors. And it's, it's kind of deep and you can believe it or you, or, or you can't, but. You know, that's just like, uh your opinion man you know sometimes like a purple speckle will work really well or like a green and red speckle sort of like sort of like this one has here so it just depends on the day and it can make a little bit of a difference when you're tournament fishing and every single bite matters but i guess if you're if you're just out casually fishing which is most of my fishing um i wouldn't worry too much about it i can't believe i told them about the speckles can't believe I told you guys about the speckles. All right, one more secret, and that is downsizing tubes. Now, I don't think my dad will be very happy that I tell you guys this, but one of his favorite things to do when the toughest bite, when the bite is tough, is he will switch to a two inch tube, a tiny little tube, as small tube as you can find, and he loves to do that. He thinks that it turns the negative fish. It makes them a little bit, a little bit more willing to bite. So next time you're out fishing and they don't bite this mongo thing, just downsize to a smaller one, like a two inch tube. And that, that, might, that might do the trick for you. Again, when I'm fishing tubes, I personally like to use braided line with a floral leader. Uh, I like it because when I'm fishing in weeds, I can easily rip the bait out of the weeds you know, where mono has more stretch or straight floral has more stretch. All right guys, so that is my top five smallmouth bass lures for summer. But I didn't feel right about making this list without adding this last bait. So I have one more bonus bait for you and that is the Ned Rig. Now the Ned Rig is awesome. Actually in a lot of cases, old Ned is replacing the tube for me, which Sounds silly because, because the tube is obviously such a mainstay for smallmouth, but the Ned is absolutely killer. And as I said, it's replacing the tube in a lot of cases because I'm using this in a lot of the same situations that I would normally use a tube. And that's when I need something sitting down on the bottom, slowly dragging across the bottom. The Ned gets bit. Now, Ned rigs have gotten super duper popular over the last year or two, and most of what you hear about it is based on largemouth bass fishing. But the Ned rig is actually one of the best rigs for smallmouth bass fishing, and it looks stupid, but it works. It's, it's just the way it is, I'm sorry guys. You know, it's funny, when, when the Sanko came out, a lot of people thought, oh, that is the dumbest looking thing ever. There's no way to work. And, you know, today it's one of the best bass catch, it's probably the best way to catch a bass, um, is toss out a Sanko. And then somebody decided, hmm, well, what would happen if I just ripped off half the Sanko and just had this dinky little thing and put it on a hook? Well, turns out that's also a ridiculously good way to catch fish and it looks even dumber than a Sanko. Just a tiny little Ned. So, you know guys, I don't make the rules, but I, I do use what works. So grab a Ned rig and try it for a smallmouth bass and you will not be disappointed. All right guys, so that wraps up my top five favorite smallmouth bass fishing lures. And I just wanted to do this video because I know that you see a lot of 
top five bass lures for this, top five bass lures for that, but it's almost always about largemouth bass. So I wanted to make something for smallmouth, for all you smallmouth guys, and I love smallmouth. Smallmouth are probably my favorite species of fish to catch. So these are just five or six of my favorite lures. So I wanna thank you guys for watching, and before you head out, I would love it if you guys would go down into the comment sections and share your favorite smallmouth bass lure, or maybe your top five lures. Um, you can be specific if you want. You can talk about brand, color, etc. That's up to you. But I would really appreciate it if you guys would go down and leave a comment and let me know your favorite. So until next time, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Also, before I go, a lot of you guys were giving me a hard time for uh, swinging around the big musky bait while I was doing an earlier video. So when I grabbed this big honker thing right here, I made sure that I grabbed a bait that had covers on the trebles so I didn't get hurt. So I wanna thank all you guys for watching out for me. That was very kind of you. And I will not get hooked in the future.